We begin with breaking news. Gladys Berejiklian has been found to have engaged in two separate instances of corrupt conduct in bombshell findings by the ICAC. The only good news for the now disgraced former Premier is that ICAC is not suggesting the DPP pursue criminal charges against Ms Berejiklian. Let's go straight now to our political editor, Andrew Clonell. Andrew, firstly, what's your reaction to this report? Well, it's the corrupt former Premier Gladys Berejiklian. I mean, that's the first thing you've got to know. Gladys Berejiklian is corrupt. We can call her corrupt. Until and unless, Danica, such time as she overturns this finding, if she's able to do so, in the Supreme Court of New South Wales. Nick Greiner did similarly. He was found uh, to have engaged in such conduct and he overturned the findings of ICAC having set up the body. Having, uh, the extraordinary thing about this, however, as well as the fact that we now have a corrupt former Premier in the state of New South Wales, is this recommendation not to prosecute her. And many people will be puzzled by this, given that she has been found corrupt. The answer to that perhaps lies in the 2015 ICAC legislation, the reforms to ICAC that Mike Baird made. Gladys Berejiklian was Deputy Liberal Leader. The Ministerial Code of Conduct was placed within the remit of the ICAC Act. But that's a disciplinary matter, not a criminal matter. But Section 11 is key too. This is the section of ICAC where if you are a public official and you have suspicion of what may be corrupt conduct, you must report it. And it's quite clear that Gladys Berejiklian didn't do this. And I'd like to see how she's going to stand up any argument in the Supreme Court uh, that, that she did uh, actually fulfil her public duties. I think there's an argument that Gladys Berejiklian should have resigned on that day in October 2020 when she was first called to the ICAC witness box to give evidence. And there's this extraordinary line too uh, in this ICAC report and ICAC media release in relation to the Ministerial Code of Conduct. It says, Ms Berejiklian submitted to the Commission that as Premier, the Ministerial Code did not apply to her. Well, if that isn't Gladys Berejiklian of recent years, I don't know what is. The ministerial code, she said, it didn't apply to me because I was Premier. Here's what the report found. It found the Commission finds that Ms Berejiklian engaged in serious corrupt conduct by breaching public trust in 2016 and 17 through exercising her official functions in relation to funding promised and or awarded to the Australian Clay Target Association without disclosing her personal relationship with Mr Maguire a clear conflict of interest, and it found that she interfered in decisions around this. These included when she was treasurer, causing the proposal to be included on the agenda, supporting it at the ERC meeting, and directing bureaucrats to revisit the benefit cost ratio. This ultimately led to the funding being awarded. She never declared it to the Premier Mike Baird. Significantly, also, the Commission finds that Ms Berejiklian engaged in serious corrupt conduct by refusing to discharge her duty under Section 11 of the Act to notify the Commission of her suspicion that Mr Maguire had engaged in activities which concerned or might have concerned corrupt conduct. At the time Ms Berejiklian failed to report her suspicions to the Commission, she was Premier of the State. Daryl Maguire had just been uncovered in an ICAC inquiry in 2018, uh, a phone tap alleging he was seeking commission from a developer while an MP. She'd been dating him. She'd had phone conversations with him about his business activities. She signed off on two staffers going down and reporting what they knew about Mr Maguire, but she chose not to do so. And you can't do that. Everyone in state politics knows, knows the rules around ICAC. Journalists, staffers and MPs. But ultimately, Danika, this is the phone tap which buried Gladys Berejiklian. Not really. Don't, I, don't, do. I don't need to know. Who's which little friend you're talking about? Mm. I don't need to know about that bit. I've been subpoenaed to go to ICAC, summons to ICAC. So that's exciting. What? Yeah. What for? I think that her, what was to benefit from the skullduggery was getting up to don't, don't the council. I don't, want, I don't want to know any of that stuff. They could probably actually listen to any calls that were being made between me and this phone and any individual that I choose to talk to, including you. Is that going to be a problem? Words. I don't need to know about that bit when Daryl Maguire is telling the then Premier 
about his business activities. It was Maguire's phone that was tapped. He was being investigated, not Berejikli, and but she was silly enough to utter those words. In October 2020, I confronted Gladys Berejikli and after her first appearance at ICAC. When he was talking about Badgerys Creek land deals, I don't need to know that bit. Mr Clennell, um, I reject that um, assumption strongly. Um, I've always acted uh, in the best interest of the people of this state. It's not about the personal, it's about the professional. Why didn't you pull up Daryl Maguire in any of these phone calls? Why didn't well, you look, report that... any of this behaviour? He was clearly lobbying for developers while you were Premier and he was a Parliamentary Secretary. Why didn't you act on this, Premier? Uh, well, look, that's um, all your opinion, uh, Mr Clinnell. It's in the I'll evidence, this. Premier. And why didn't it raise alarm bells for you that he was lobbying for matters outside his electorate? It must have, Premier. But at all times, there was a clear distinction between my personal life and uh, the way I conducted my public office. So I spoke earlier about 2018. Daryl Maguire has resigned over corruption, revealed in the ICAC. Gladys Berejiklian... From these phone taps, from the findings here, she's been labelled corrupt. She knew that Daryl Maguire was up to no good. She must have suspected corrupt conduct. Not only did she not go to ICAC and report what she knew, but she actually dared Luke Foley, the then opposition leader, to race down there if he knew anything about corruption allegations in concerning Mr Maguire. You do not require a motion from this place or the other place to refer a matter exactly. to ICAC. If he or anybody else, if he or anybody else has any issues of concern, I urge them, urge them to take it to Madam Speaker, I refer my call to every single member of this place. If you see or hear anything which require which is of concern which you feel ICAC should investigate, refer it on the spot. Don't wait three or four weeks. Now, there'll be much debate, including on Sky for the rest of the day, Danica, and in coming days about ICAC, the rules around it, which were set when Gladys Berejiklian were in Cabinet, I might add, and why there's no recommendation for prosecution. I come to you from a state where I saw a Premier and Deputy Premier jailed after Royal Commissions, but there's no appetite for it here, no evidence, it seems, to do it here. She's broken the rules, not the law, according to ICAC. But uh, the most astonishing line in this report to me is that in the submissions back to ICAC, Ms Berejiklian submitted to the commission that as Premier, the ministerial code did not apply to her. I'm Premier, I don't need to follow the rules, she said. Well, she did need to follow the rules and that's why she's no longer Premier.